What's up YouTube? Brandon Rao came here today with a new YouTube video and judging by the title of the video and the thumbnail of course this video is going to be uh, focused on my battle vest and uh, just showcasing it throughout this video and all the patches and whatnot on it. So uh, before I get into the video don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to turn on post notifications so you will not miss any videos when I upload them and uh Let's get right into it. So before I show off the vest and everything on it, I, I figured I'd just say this and get it out of the way. I've been wanting to do a video on my vest for a while and uh, I've just been putting it off, but now I feel motivated to make a video on it. Plus I've got everything that I want on the vest on there. So that's uh, another reason why I haven't been getting to recording this video, but as I said, everything's on there. I'm happy with the way it looks. And um, yeah, at some point in the future, I'm gonna do a video on my battle jacket. I'm sure some of you have seen it. The denim jacket with, uh, what patches are on this? Slayer, Misfits, Motorhead, Megadeth. Uh, I can't remember what else was on there, but yeah. Plan to do a video on that, and uh, enough of me wasting time chit chatting. Now, on to the vest. Alright, so here we have the front of the vest. Uh, apologies in advance if the video looks a little shaky. I don't have steady hands when recording like this. But, uh, yeah. I'll start off with the left side. So, on top, we have the radiation symbol. And I made him patch. And also on the uh, the collar, we have a pin of the A knots, which is the punk band that I'm in. Down here on the pocket, we have a pin of the Jagaloons, a surf band out of New York. I actually saw them live back in October of 2019. Yeah, that's right. Over here, we have a BC Rich Junkies pin. Uh, if you don't know what that is it's basically a um, uh, a cult following of the guitar brand BC Rich and um, I think it's like a community on Facebook I believe I don't know too much about it but um, yeah I managed to acquire a pin and uh, yeah it's down here we have testament um, you know classic thrash metal can't not include them on a vest you know just amazing thrash metal let's just put it like that over here we have a pin of a bc rich warlock judging by the looks of it i'd say this was probably modeled after maybe an 80s nj series obviously you have the uh, the classic six in line bc rich headstock with the r i uh, got the fretboard you got the kaler tremolo I'm gonna guess maybe a DiMarzio pickup in the bridge position. Got three knobs. Is that a pickup switch? No, I'm gonna guess that's maybe like a kill switch. I don't know. BC Rich was very known for all kinds of wacky electronic stuff on their guitars back in the 80s. Um, obviously a lot of Neil Moser's work. But yeah. Over here, Creator, classic German thrash metal. Uh, can't forget about them when you're talking about German metal. Ozzy, you know, Prince of Darkness, Anthrax, New York thrash metal at its best. Death, it, it, one of the godfathers of death metal. Not the godfathers, but one of them. We have Exodus. Once again, classic thrash metal. Uh, Bay, Area, Bay Area, I think. Yeah. Right here we got a Pembroke Welsh Corgi Puppy. Now, I've gotten quite a bit of comments on the Corgi patch. Some people, uh, the majority of people like it. And uh, then there are some people who don't like it. I, I honestly don't understand how you can't dis... Let me word this better. If you don't like Corgis, you've got issues. Okay, let's just put it at that. If you don't like Corgis, you've got issues. Down here we got a Orbi Knot patch. I actually met the, uh, uh, who was he? The one guitarist from 
this band, Tony, when I was at a, a heavy metal summer camp last year. Uh, if you've been subscribed to me for a while, you probably, probably would have seen the video I put up of uh, that song I wrote with a few other guys. It's really fun. Down here, we have the Almighty Slayer. You know, Slayer, they need no introduction. Um, obviously one of the most popular metal bands out there. Uh, and definitely one of the most influential. Down here we got a Cannibal Corpse. Once again, classic. Very, very highly respected band. Um, I, I don't really know how to put it other than that. Obviously this is the modern Cannibal Corpse logo, the uh, Corpse Grinder era. Not, you know, the classic logo when they saw Chris Barnes in the band. Now, if you ask me, I'm a more of a Corpse Grinder person, but I do like a lot of the stuff that was released under Cannibal Corpse's name when they had um, Chris Barnes in the band. Now onto the right side of the vest. Over here, starting off with the Anarchy patch, I've gotten a lot of comments on this one. A lot of people have shown dislike for that. I, I I don't really know what to say, but uh, I like it, and that's all that matters to me. Down here, we have a, uh, a pin of a punk band out of Pennsylvania called Big Handsome. The bass player bought a uh, bass guitar off of Roser Guitars, which I'll get to that in a little bit. Over here, we have a pin that I got from... The person behind Chaos Guitars, his name is Dave. Really, really awesome dude. If you need any kind of, um, you know, work done on a guitar, whether it's a paint job, electronics, or whatever, and um, you're in Pennsylvania or somewhere close to that, feel free to hit him up. Once again, really nice guy. Really awesome dude. Over here, we got a BC Rich Iron Bird pin. Just like the Warlock, it has the uh, the Kaler Tremolo, the single humbucker. This one only has one knob, which is, uh, I'm going to guess, a volume knob. The uh, the pointy headstock, um, I, I forgot what it was called, but six in line. Down here, we got the Gibson Explorer pin. Uh, one of my favorite guitar models. Got a white pick guard, two humbucker pickups, two pneumatic stop tail bridge, three knobs pickup selector and a six in line banana headstock with the, the Gibson logo on it. I, I don't know how this brand that makes the pins gets away with using these logos. I don't know if they're licensed or not. But anyways, so over here as I just brought up about uh, Chaos Guitars, uh, no not Chaos Guitars, I'm sorry. Big Handsome, we have Roser Guitars which is the guitar company that I co-own. And uh, yeah, we got some patches made. Obviously, they're not top notch quality, but it's better than nothing. So, over here, we have a uh, Jackson Guitars patch. Uh, looks like it's modeled either after a Soloist or a Dinky. But uh, yeah, the cool six in line reverse headstock. Yeah. Over here, we have Dark Angel. A uh, really underappreciated thrash metal band uh, compared to some of the other bands on this fest like uh, uh, Exodus and Slayer. Dark Angel definitely deserves a lot more love in my opinion. Over here we got the Metal Gods, Judas Priest. Obviously very influential heavy metal band. Definitely one of the classics and most important bands to heavy metal history. Sorry. Over here we got a uh, Marshall amplifier patch. I was surprised I managed to find this. I was looking at um, like patches of amp brands and I just so happened to come across this online. I knew I had to get it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any Randall patches, which I was disappointed, but it's not the end of the world. Over here we got Overkill. Once again, just like Dark Angel, very underappreciated when compared to some other bands on this vest. Over here we got Twisted Sister. 
Now, I, I know this may not be the number one favorite band of a lot of metalheads, but once again, I don't care. This is my vest, and uh, I put what I want. Down here, we got Metallica. Once again, very influential, um, very important to heavy metal history, but also gets a lot of... Um, how do I put this? Bad, uh, bad backlash. Let's just put it that from a lot of metalheads, you know, because of the 90s era and um, the stuff they pull with Napster, all that kind of stuff. I don't pay attention to that. I just care about the music, but yeah, Metallica. Over here, we got Black Sabbath. Once again, very, very influential, uh, obviously because they created heavy metal. And uh, yeah, the Godfathers of Metal. Over here, we got Pantera. Once again, very, very influential, very popular in the metal community. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about Pantera. But yeah, that's the front side of the vest. And now on to the back. Okay, so we got the back of the vest. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So starting off with the center of attention, we got the anthrax among the living back patch. Um, I was trying to um, decide on what I wanted to have as a back patch, and I figured why not have among the living since that was one of the metal albums that got me into metal. And uh, yeah, I probably should have gotten one with color, but I don't know. The black and white, the black and white seems pretty cool. Nonetheless, up here we got Dio. Very underappreciated, if you ask me. Like, a lot of metalheads like Dio, but I don't know. I feel they could use a little bit more love than what they get. Over here we got Black Label Society, one of my favorite bands. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Zach Wilde's just an amazing guitar player. I met him back in a... October of 2017, he signed a, let's see, a shirt of mine. He also signed a picture of him with one of his Wild audio guitars. And uh, yeah, really good band. Zach Wild's an amazing guitarist and an awesome person overall. Over here we got Motorhead. As I've said before with uh, other bands on this vest, very influential and important to metal. If you can see in the beginning of the video, I was wearing a Motorhead shirt. Over here, we got Venom. Uh, I'm gonna guess these guys were fans of Motorhead, considering that some of their stuff sounds very Motorhead-inspired. Uh, a lot of their earlier stuff, like maybe a lot of stuff off of their debut album, I'd say. Down here, we got Crotion of Conformity, one of the um, best... Um, New Orleans bands, even though they weren't originally from New Orleans, and uh, before Pepper Keen and Jordan Band, they were more of like the hardcore punk band they were, but uh, yeah, awesome band with a lot of talent, but not enough love. Down here we have uh, Cool Bomb, I bought this patch, and also, no actually, I bought a hat from the guitar player, and he also pitched in two patches, so that was really nice of him. Really, really cool band out of Pennsylvania. Check them out if you get the chance. Uh, they're, they've got two EPs out, I believe. Uh, Trinity, Terror, and Manhattan Mischief, if I remember correctly. But yeah, really good band. Really worth checking out if you get the opportunity. Definitely recommend them. Over here, we got Nuclear Assault Survive. Once again, very underappreciated when compared to other bands and... Uh, I don't know, just really, really amazing thrash metal. Obviously, they got Dan Loker previously from Anthrax in there. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Just really good music. We got Sepultura. Um, what era was this logo from? Um, I can't remember exactly what years, but uh, I think this was post-Max Cavalera. Either way, Sepultura, one of my favorite bands, and uh, yeah. 
over here we got down with Phil Ansama with the uh, looks like some kind of a uh, headwear he's obviously smoking some I don't know if that's a cigarette or something else but either way next patch we have here is possessed uh, recently within I don't know maybe last year or so I've seen a like a spike in popularity of possessed like a lot more people discovering them and uh, yeah a lot more people listening to their music um, if anybody has ever had a conversation with uh, Jeff Becerra you you know that he is such a friendly dude and overall awesome person he's just I don't know how to put it it's when you talk to him it's not like you're talking to somebody who's I won't. I wouldn't want to say better than you, but just it doesn't feel like you're talking to. I I don't know how to put it. When you talk to Jeff, it feels like you're talking to another person, and that's how he acts. He doesn't act like he's better than you. He's such a sweet, loving person, and uh, if you ever get the chance to talk to Jeff, I, I strongly suggest you do. He's awesome. Over here we got Damage Plan. When compared to Pantera, Damage Plan is severely underrated. A lot of people, especially from Pantera's fan base, like to uh, dump on Damage Plan. I understand why, and I understand like the arguments people make about um, Patrick Lachman's vocals sounding like a Phil Anselmo ripoff or whatever you want to complain about. I understand it, but. I really enjoy Newfound Power, and uh, it, it's such a shame that the band's no longer together. It's such a shame that Dimebag Daryl and Vinnie Paul are both gone, and um, it is, it's just a really sad story. Like, if you watch any of the Pantera documentaries, they'll definitely bring up Damage Plan and uh, the Ohio, um, Columbus, Ohio nightclub shooting where Dimebag Daryl got killed, and it, it's depressing. But, uh, yeah, Damage Plan, one of my favorite bands. Next up, we have Lamb of God. I'm still kind of asking myself why I bother getting a Lamb of God patch when uh, the, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but at the same time, I haven't listened to them too much. But uh, I can name a few songs just offhand, and that's basically my criteria of having a patch on a vest or a jacket. As long as it can name, I don't know, three songs offhand, then uh, then you have the right to put, a, put the patch on your vest. Next up, we have Death Angel. Once again, along with bands like Overkill and Dark Angel, Death Angel definitely deserves a lot more love than they get. And um, yeah. Just really awesome Bay Area thrash metal. Down here we got Morbid Angel. Florida death metal at its finest. Um, I don't know what else to say about Morbid Angel other than they're just awesome death metal. Down here we got a Pepsi patch. I figured why not. Uh, you know... I like soda, I like Pepsi. I figured I'd get it and put it on the vest because why not? But uh, yeah, that pretty much sums it up for the back of the vest. If you can see right here, these like these black markings, I don't know how they got here, but um, I'm kind of disappointed about it because you know, obviously your battle vest is not going to stay in pristine condition for as long as you have it. But still, I don't know how those black markings got here. And I'm very, very nervous to, you know, wash it because I don't know if it might end up ruining something, patch or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I don't know where it came from and, uh. I, I don't know what else to say. There's also, looks like some got on the Sepultura patch, like right here, here, here. But yeah, strange. I think it was somewhere else, I think. There it was. Is it a little bit of, um, 
Okay, I thought there were some of those like, black markings on the motorhead patch, but I guess I was wrong. Right here, too. Anyways, it's not the end of the world, but, uh, yeah. That's my battle vest as of July 2020. Hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay metal.